Okay, hello everyone. This is a third masterclass in a row on uh, each Monday, 3.30 CET time, always. Uh, yeah, the lights come on. Uh, my lights were very dark. Now it's better. Now it's gone again. Hope will be clear for you. Yes, uh, today, a uh, great question. Uh, because that is the question, talking about a return or July, so to add or not adding alcohol in the sake making. So we will address this question with Nicolas, Nicolas Rocher who work with us uh, and who is drinking uh, July sake right now uh, with me also, so Kampai Nicolas, because it will be a pity to talk about sake without having sake in our glass or even having a glass. Uh, this will be another subject one day to talk about glass or sake uh, or just cup or what kind of glass. There's so many approach, but so many sake also to different variety. So uh, we will, uh, as, as uh, each Monday, the idea here is to, uh, is to talk about uh, neon shoe, about sake, but trying to capture the essential and complex uh, of the sake elaboration, but in a concise uh, summaries. So, and 30 minutes, 25 minutes with the opening and the closing. So, and uh, we will do that each Monday. That's what we've been doing since three weeks. So, and uh, after that, you can go on our uh, Seke community, Seke Graphy on our web, and you get already the text of Aritan and uh, June Mai uh, adding or not adding alcohol is already on our web. And uh, the one of last week is being added today or yesterday, I think about the, the Seke classification. So uh, if you want to go get the second classification, it's on the web. We will go back a little bit on that today because there's some link uh, to what we'll be, uh, we will talk about today uh, that is linked to the second classification. So uh, I have no choice about that. So let's start. We will share, I will share also my screen. Um, yes, one second, no, it doesn't work. Uh, let me close that here. Partage uh, l'écran. Yeah, Nicola, you, you have disactivated the sh screen sharing, I think. Is it possible? Mm, I don't think so, but you can try again. That's what my computer telling me, uh, that you have disactivated uh, the screen sharing. Too much shaky. Uh, oh. Okay, meanwhile, uh, just to say that uh, about about and June Mai, so the difference between both, there's a big philosophy behind that. Adding or not adding alcohol and the sake process, sake making, uh, depends of the toiji, so the sake master of the different brewery. They have all is their own philosophy about the sake process making and about adding or not adding alcohol. It's not only about deciding, uh, do I want to do a Jun Mai or I want to do an Aruten? It's much more complex than that. And there's also an history impact of that philosophy. So history has always a big role and, uh, and, the, and the wine sake spirit process. Uh, look at port, just to, to name something that you add alcohol in it. This is reason of that, and this is completely linked to history. So, so that's the same with the sake. If we look at the sake classification, maybe Nicola, you can share your screen. Yes. yes okay, perfect. So you will see you will see more about the the sake classification um, that we talked a bit last week. Uh, Nicola, you can deep, huh? you can dip into the conversation. Uh, it's going to be a chat today, uh, very clear. One thing is very important to know about the, the adding or not adding alcohol in a sake making. This is uh, protected by the sake classification. So there's three different paths are very important and two basic paths is about the rice polishing ratio and it's about also the ingredient allowed to do sake, koji, rice, yeast, water. Uh, or with additive. When I say additive, it's acidity or sugar on other things and, uh, and sake process. And the third one is alcohol added or not. And the alcohol added is could, should be a neutral alcohol, 96%. And, uh, but we talk a little bit uh, later about the, the alcohol. Now, now, when you look at this uh, diagram that Nicola has put on, the, so you, you see this is linked totally to neon shoe, to the sake process. 
and you can see two different path very important. On one side, the fruit suchu sake, those are aruten uh, sake with additive. And on the other side, the pre premium sake, that's our uh, tukuti mai shushu sake. So those are only sake made with rice, koji, water, without uh, any additive. So except uh, fruit suchu, uh, where is the, the cursor of Nicola right now? It's uh, aden, uh, aruten with aden alcohol and could be also with additive. So all the rest, so it's, it's quite easy. When you take a bottle of sake in your hand, the, the first thing you should look for if you want to know about the alcohol or not, if it's a junmai, if junmai is written somewhere, they, there's no alcohol add and the sake. If there's no junmai word, uh, the magic word, if it's a magic word for you, uh, that means they, they will be uh, alcohol add in the process of making. Doesn't matter, doesn't mean that it's uh, less better or better. It's not about quality here, it's quite different, it's about style. So we're gonna go a little bit de deeper about uh, talking about the style of uh, those. So those premium sake are, are not only Junmai. Junmai is no alcohol added, and uh, Aruten sake is with alcohol added. So you will see Onjozo sake, Genjo sake, Dai Genjo sake, those are with alcohol added. But be careful, you will see some, say if you don't know about those, uh, those word, those uh, legislation. There's Genjo and there's Junmai Dai Genjo. There's Dai Genjo and there's Junmai Dai Genjo. Junmai never alcohol add. So a Dai Genjo is with alcohol add. A Genjo with alcohol add. But when there's a wall Junmai with, no alcohol add. After that, there's a polishing ratio. But this, we talked about that uh, already uh, weeks before, and we will go back to the polishing ratio because it's so important. The impact is so uh, totally linked to the quality, to the aromatic profile, to the taste, the texture, the umami or not, the acidity or not. So uh, this uh, need uh, one, two or three uh, masterclass only to talk about the impact of polishing ratio on the sake. So just remember, label Junmai, always uh, no alcohol add. All the rest will be with alcohol add. So this is quite important. You want to add something, Nicola? No, absolutely perfect for me. Just, yeah, maybe, but we're going to talk to this about this. Why they don't precise Aruten? You're going to see it in the I story. Uh, why we use Junmai for no alcohol added, and the term Aruten is not really used. In, in sake process and maybe you never heard about it before that's normal yeah totally uh, cool um and so the the, the big question uh, when you look at the history of sake process is uh, why adding alcohol to a product which have already a high percentage of alcohol when i say a high percentage of alcohol is compared to some of wine let's say wine or beer uh, mostly beer is uh, five to six, so a lot of beer today are seven, eight, nine, but mostly uh, 5.5 is, we'll say, the medium range uh, percentage of alcohol, and wine today is mostly 13, 13.5, the medium range. A lot of wine are 14, 5, 15, sometimes much more than that, but the label have uh, 1% or 1.5 uh, uh, elastic uh, to about the legislation, depending on the country. So, um, so, but I think the history can, can answer that uh, very well uh, to, to be linked to what's been happened today. So Nicola is very good in history. Maybe I'll let you go on that, Nicola. Yes, we're gonna get really a quick recap of what's happened having alcohol in, in sake. So the first sake, it was in 689. The first war sake was put with the government and it was without alcohol added, just for one reason. You can see during the Edo period, so that's more or less the 16th century, they start to, to produce soshu. Soshu, this is a distilled alcohol from rice, the traditional from Japan. So if you want to add distilled alcohol in a product, you need to produce distilled alcohol. So that's why before 16th century, Aruten wasn't existing because you, can have, you can't add alcohol if you don't produce this distilled alcohol. So they really, this is quite new. This is come from the 16th century to add this alcohol inside. And the big democratization was in during the Second World War. 
you know, rice is really important to eat, to, to feed the, the military, the army, and also use the kura to stock. So if you want to produce sake and you don't get rice, you get two options. You can add other products. And during the war, alcohol was added to the rice and alcohol was added to the sake to produce more quantity. Thanks to that, you can keep the quantity of sake, adding alcohol and adding also sugar. That's the reason that Aruten is not a word really common in sake language, just because Aruten appeared during the Second World War. And that was then the best moment of Japan and the best moment of sake quality. It was quite bad quality making. It was really hot, really burning. And maybe that's the moment like in our spirit, sake is burning and really strong. Maybe this moment, because during the Second World War and 10 or 15 years after, the sake was like this, was really strong. And after during the 18th, come back the Junmai, the traditional way to make, that means without alcohol added. We talked about this last week, like the nuclear nification, and Francois just talked about it. Like in 91, they really divide the two ways of making, adding alcohol or not. And maybe we can talk a little bit about the future, but I think Francois, you, you agree with me to say, June Mai is back, June Mai is maybe the future. Like usually the past is the future, and maybe for June Mai this is the case. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we we just uh, uh, maybe ending the period of the of the of the, um, the Genjo bird who was a start in, uh, in the eighties. The Genjo uh, went very popular because they were so aromatic, so fresh, uh, so sexy, uh, and they still are, and they are great sake. It's not about uh, saying that Genjo are no good. But June Mai has been a, being a bit in the shadow of the shadow of the Genjo because of the history. But today, uh, the June Mai is getting back on the, on the track and it's getting in front of, of Genjo, especially in some contests. Uh, why? It's because uh, there are no alcohol add. This is one thing, but more than that, they, they are sake with much more complexity, more deep, texture, more umami, so more feeling, sake that is amazing on matching with food also. So many aspects and, and, the, and the, the toiji are taking care of the junmai. Because it's a bit, I will do a parallel, I never thought of that, it's a bit a parallel with the white wine industry compared to red wine. Since the first publication of the, of the I would say that the French paradox in 1991 in New York, New York Times newspaper, they publish uh, an experiment about uh, research about uh, resveratrol, who's amazing in red wine uh, for, for protecting us against cancer and uh, uh, so uh, for health. So, but since that day, there have been so much, so much research published about that, not only in wine magazine, also in a newspaper every day, bang, bang, bang. So if you go back in 1991, everybody uh, around the world, we were drinking 60% of white wine, 40% of red wine, more or less. Some rosé wine for sure, but just to say, was well, 60, 40. Today, it's 81% of red wine and just a bit of white wine. Why? because of the French paradox. This is the first thing, for sure. Everybody's looking for good health, even if you don't notice, you, when you read something, it's kept in your mind. Everybody drinks King Red, even with sushi or with anything, even as aperitive. So, uh, so Red Wine has I, I, I take the path. Ginjo have done the same, not for the same reason, but have done the same, I overpassed June Mai Sake. Today, John Maisa King getting back is uh, let the noblesse. I don't know if you say that in English, but it's getting more uh, noble uh, letter, but it's a very bad translation. So yes, uh, uh, I'm totally. Maybe because also when you look at John Mai, it can be, can be take as a more natural product compared to, Ar to Arutan, huh, Nicola? So it's uh, because why? Because there's no alcohol add in a John Mai, and there's no additive add. And when I say additive, I talk about acidity, sugar, more or less, and the production. So this gives to John Mai a very unique, natural kind of profile. So, but life is not always that simple, especially in, uh, in Japan, uh, <clears throat> not in Japan, in sake process, because there's a lot of Genjo and Daigenjo Aruten, so with add alcohol, that have never had any additive. 
You know, many, many, many Genjo and Daigenjo, Aruten, don't use additive, don't use sugar, don't use acidity to upgrade the sake. So are they less natural than, than Junmai? Mm, I don't think. Does depend of your philosophy of adding alcohol in a product. Yeah, so, I, I totally agree. I think also yeah. like the new generation about communication, a lot of yeah. people think, I think it's my mind about marketing a little bit, but a lot of think, people think like sake is strong alcohol. And if you want to communicate sake is not strong in alcohol and you say we add alcohol inside, maybe that's not the best way to show that's not strong. So maybe now people is like June Mike without alcohol added. And maybe it's easier also to explain to people that the alcohol is natural. We're going to talk about like, it's not because this is Aruten with alcohol added that it's going to be more alcoholic. That's really important to say it. Yeah, that's a very good point, Nicola, because uh, around the world, especially in uh, North America uh, and even in Europe, uh, people have learned with sake in the 70s, 80s. I'm talking about the older people. Uh, I've, lear I've learned with sake with very bad sake, serve warm, not serve warm, serve hot, too hot, completely, because warm sake is amazing. So June Mai, serve warm, it's so good. So, but uh, serve hot, burning, getting the alcohol, 20% pro alcohol pro product, not very good product. Uh, and you just keep drinking like that and doing uh, 20 kampai uh, during your eating, you get drunk. So everybody uh, think, not everybody, but so much people now, so much customer think sake is a, a high, high alcohol product. This is not the case. So for sure, if you work in a high-end restaurant or a specialized wine bar and sake, people know about sake. They know it's not, uh, it's not high alcohol product. But when you start talking with the people, people around you, there's a lot of work to be done still. And this is a good thing because we are there to, to try to bring the people to know more about sake and understand that this is a very fresh, very elegant, very nice product. And even that the, the end, I don't know why, this is there's not a scientific proof, but the, the, the integration of alcohol and, and our body, is, is, I feel it different. And I don't say that to sell anything. Um, it's just my story. It's 35 years I'm drinking sake. And uh, each time I don't have the same effect of the alcohol. But this is, uh, we need to have a scientific approach on that. And I don't think there's been some research on that yet. So, uh, so it's very interesting to see. You see here, uh, Nicola has put uh, uh, the, the we, we create this, uh, this graphic to show the alcohol first. The alcohol is added when the fermentation is finished, so, but before pressing. So that means the alcohol on the left side, the alcohol is left in, in the middle side, I will say, alcohol added, it's added on the sake that still having the casu. The casu is the, the leaves after the fermentation, all the solid part, not even not the leaves, the solid part of the rice. So it's like a cake, huh? we say a sake cake. So, but this casu is full of aroma, full of molecule. So, and they, some molecules are very big ones. They don't go out on the sake because the sake is not yet a very high alcohol. To extract alcohol, uh, to extract molecules, some of the higher uh, profile molecule, you need more alcohol. So uh, that's why when, when you, you put uh, spirit and uh, oak, he will extract, you know, scotch or whiskey will extract a lot from the oak, much more than a wine at 15% of alcohol. It's 40%. And when you put it, it's at 90%. You extract a lot. Alcohol is an extractor of aroma. So, um, so it will, that's the main reason, reason we can say, Nicola, that we, the people who are the, the, the today, uh, the, the toji who use alcohol and the process is to get more aroma, more molecules extract from the castle. Exactly. And I think that's important to say, of course, there is a conservation reason because when they put it, you get more alcohol and you can transport by boat your sake and protect your sake. So that was on, on the reason, but the main reason, this is the flavor. And we come back with the idea of ginjo, dai ginjo, get like more apple nuts, banana, melon, watermelon nuts. It's going to be like this. You're going to extract more alcohol and get maybe more aromatic profile, more precise, more straight because of this, because you're going to extract more molecule of what you, you like. And that's really important. This is not to get more alcohol at the end of the product. This is just 
to get an aromatic perfume different and maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit more precise, we say it. You get less backgrounds because you are, you can see the, the last uh, yeah. graphic. Yes, you are taking more molecules, but that's also, you're gonna dilute the small one. So if, for example, the little triangle, this one, there are just a few now in this big quantity. Here, you got a little bit more. So of course, the background of the complexity is gonna be less. You're gonna extract more of an aromatic perfume. So that's just really, really, just different. It's created at the same time a kind of dilution. So that's it's very strange, this effect of adding alcohol because you add more liquid, alcohol is liquid, you add more liquid, so it's kind of, you extract on one side, but you dilute at the same yeah. time. And we have to not forget most of the sake uh, uh, at the water also, dilution before. I don't like the word dilution. That's the word everybody uses, but uh, it's not about dilution. It's about creating harmony. Uh, it's about getting Genshu sake or not uh, adding alcohol, uh, water at the end. So that means you add, you add alcohol a little bit at the end of the fermentation before pressing, then you press, and then on the process, you will add a little bit of water to, to harmonize everything. So, and when you look at the, at the sake with, uh, who add alcohol, sometimes they have less alcohol on the label at the end, then some were not being diluted with water, Genshu Sake. So it, it, that's why it's not that simple to capture the essence of uh, adding alcohol or not, adding water or not in a Sake production. They are not looking for having more alcohol. They are not look, looking for dilution. They are looking for harmony. This is the way uh, the, the Toiji thinks to get that. So, and the alcohol is used to do that. It's a, a neutral distilled alcohol. Maybe you, you want to talk a bit about that, uh, uh, the kind of alcohol, uh, Nicola? Yeah, it's too long time ago. It was a lot of soshu because they produce it, they use it, but soshu is really powerful. If you can try it one day, try it, you're gonna see it's nuts, nuts, it's powerful, it's tasty. And we go back at the idea here is to extract more sake, casu aroma. It's not to give a taste. So if you put a product with taste, you're going to change the philosophy. Some producers are making it, but really a few still using Soshu. But usually people use natural alcohol distilled. So it could be rice, it could be cereal, it could be potatoes. You know, the large one, 96 degree, degrees of alcohol, really strong. And the idea is just to extract when you put it. Just for the info, usually when the Kura receives this 96% alcohol, he's going to dilute it with alcohol to get to 35%. Just you can imagine, if you put one centiliter more of 96% alcohol, you got to change everything. If you put one centiliter more of 35%, it's easier to balance and to adjust your, your percentage. Then you got some low. So this is usually with the weight of the rice. So if we go to the premium category, uh, we see on Joshua and Gichu, this is 10% of your weight of the rice. And in the other category, this is 50%. 50%, I'm sorry to say it, but... This is um, useless, we're going to say. If you put 50% of alcohol in your product, I don't know which product you get at the beginning, but it, it should be a strange product. So sorry to be a little bit sincere for this. but <laughs> and, um, and then you, you got some law, but frankly speaking, the law about added alcohol, it, it's not a real limit when you, you are producing sake. As you can see, if you put 50% of alcohol in your sake, that's quite amazing. We'll be curious. Uh, to know about uh, um, uh, next time we go to Japan uh, at, uh, at Tanaka, we'll talk with, uh, with the, the, the Toji more about that to know what will be the impact if we go back in history because there have been a time there was always uh, the alcohol had, had, and sake was shushu alcohol. So, uh, but shushu was not that good at that time. Today, there's very good shushu on the market. So it will be very interesting to see why not going back to make it a real Japanese product. You understand what I mean yes. by real? So having only, so the rice could, uh, for a real neon shoe, the rice should be Japanese, grow in Japan, the yeast, the, the water, the, the, the koiji. So, and uh, why not the alcohol add an Ariten Sake um, should be, I think, uh, Japanese, 100%. 
So the problem is they need to distill more alcohol for that. So what's the economy of uh, selling alcohol for sake brewer or selling shoshu on the market and higher price? There's maybe a problem of economy there. But if we just forget about that, just say, I would like to do a sake and adding alcohol, only uh, Japanese alcohol, a, a rice alcohol or from wine alcohol. Could be from wine uh, done in Japan also. So it could be done with that because now it could be done with anything if I understand. Yes. And at the end, if you think about the Kishoshu, Kishoshu is adding sake than water. That's another way to think and Kishoshu is amazing. So that is, that's another key to produce different sake. The world of sake is amazing. We just get like five ideas in five minutes to produce, produce a new sake and that's just one step or over 20 steps to make sake. So that's always amazing world to to think. Yeah, after that, there's a protection of the appellations, sake. Sake uh, is, uh, that's why it's Nihonshu in Japan, uh, the real name of sake, because they want to protect that is from 100% product from Japan. There's some sake in China, there's some sake even in Catalonia here. It's quite good, very good, Seda Likida, uh, to name it. It's quite very, very good, but uh, it is not Japanese, it's called sake, but uh, Neon Shu is the real name for sake from Japanese, and it is protect. So, uh, so you see here, it's very interesting, the impact of taste, the consequence of using alcohol or not. I return more aromatic, lighter, crispy, refreshing, less acidity. And Jumai, for sure, you, if you don't add alcohol, you get all the amino acids, so the umami effect, texture and mouth. So, that's me a little bit for uh, full body and long aftertaste, a little bit more background. This is part of umami taste, also dimension, uh, we'll say three dimension sake compared to Aruten. But Aruten is so elegant, so a lot of definition, I will say high definition because of the alcohol adding. So uh, I could not, uh, uh, that's why I could not say that uh, uh, Junma is better than Aruten, Aru Aruten is better than Junma. No, it's a matter of philosophy. We have taste some amazing Aruten sake and some Junma also. So we are making Junma, uh, but uh, again, it's a matter of philosophy. Yeah, totally. And I saw maybe also about yeah, Ginjo, Dai Ginjo. If you're producing some Dai Ginjo and you want to maybe increase your aromatic perfume, adding alcohol can make sense because you can increase this also. also a little bit uh, get a little bit more production because you know when you get a rice 28 percent polish you start like this production is low so maybe adding this alcohol you can produce a little bit more you can adjust and get your philosophy so one more time everything could be could be possible and as you say uh, there's amazing ginjo and dai ginjo and aromatic perfume something is true is like about <coughs> junmai junmai usually and you, you talk about it hot sake usually with junmai is working a little bit much better, if you want to say it. If you get uh, Daiginjo, Aruten Daiginjo, don't try to put it hot. We're going to say 95% of the time. And if you got a Junmai, you can sometimes play a little bit more with, with the temperature. There is and no then, low, I say 95%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's the temperature of service. We'll finish with that. Yeah. Uh, Aruten uh, needs to be colder and, and your glass. A June Mai, you can, you can serve it very cold, but it's very interesting to let the temperature. You see here, I have the glass since uh, maybe 40 minutes. So it was served cold, it was somewhere around eight degrees. Now I, sh I don't have the thermometer with me, but it should be around 16, 18 degrees. And this is a June Mai. It's quite aromatic, the and full. It's getting sweeter and mild. It, there's no sugar here, but you get this feeling of sweetness. So it's very interesting, uh, the temperature. So do a little bit more temperature or let it go in your glass. And uh, the, the Aruten, uh, you keep it cool. It's much more interesting. So uh, be there Thursday, if you can, this week. Uh, we'll be there next Monday for the next uh, masterclass, but this Thursday, uh, for October 1st, is the World Sake Day. So it will be event all around the world. There will be thousands of masterclass uh, on Instagram and, uh, and Zoom around the world with all the sake experts, sake lovers. We're gonna do four different sake, uh, not masterclass, just chat 
uh, with restaurant uh, uh, crazy lover about sake uh, live from Barcelona. We're going to do four and one live from Tanaka Shuso Brewery where we do the project Tanaka 1789 Ixartier. So uh, starting at 10 o'clock uh, Barcelona time, 10 o'clock in the morning at Villa Viniteca, 11.15 at Dos Palillos, uh, amazing restaurant. We're going to be with Tamae and uh, Albert uh, Rorich, the owner. And uh, we're going to be live from Dos Palillos and live from Japan. So it's going to mix Japanese English and Spanish speaking. It's going to be a little bit crazy. And at, uh, 12, at 12.30, we're going to be live from Alchemia. I was there last week uh, to have a lunch and they made me a surprise. They, they created a dish amazing to go with uh, Jun Maiseki. We're going to make it live uh, to show you this dish is quite something. And we're going to finish the day at 3.30 Barcelona time, always CUT at Nomo Saria. So Nomo is Nomo Group. They have many Japanese uh, restaurants and, uh, in, in Spain, especially in Catalonia, but now they open one in Madrid. We're going to be live uh, from Saria and also doing it with uh, special Japanese dish, very traditional. So try to be with us uh, to catch us on, uh, on, the, on Thursday. If not, open a sake is the world sake day. So see you Thursday, maybe. See you Thursday on Instagram. See you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.